hello everybody. My name is Atilade. Um, I'm a second year master's student at the Concordia University of Edmonton. And um, yeah, I have specialized experience in Linux system administration, um, experience in cloud security and information systems um, management. So at, um, this is Pooja. Can you introduce yourself to? Hello, everyone. My name is Pooja, and I've been into information security for about eight years now. But I feel like, you know, there's still a lot to learn. I think everybody feels the same way, right? Yeah. Okay, so first of all, we are very honored to be here presenting in front of all of you. We have, you know, gathered some amazing support and guidance from the Edmonton cybersecurity community. So we are really grateful. And without further ado, let's just dive into it. Okay. So um, our topic is um, balancing AI innovation with data security and risks and controls. So I'm going to run through a brief outline. Um, I'm going to give a brief introduction. Okay, not so brief, but then introduction. And we're going to discuss AI tools across different industries, making impact across different industries. And also going to discuss some of the statistics to prove some of our claims and discuss some risks, some security challenges, and also some controls. So, yeah, in the, so like in this age of artificial intelligence, our data has become more valuable than ever. You know, like every click, every purchase, and you know, like our, from our browsing history, everything is like a digital footprint of ourselves, yeah? So like while these tools have the potential to revolutionize how we work, like how we do things, like it's also a double-edged sword. So a prime example is the, rise of deep fakes. So like you ask yourself, what is a deep fake? So a deep fake is a synthesized video or manipulated video that, uh, that convincingly projects somebody doing something they actually didn't do. And you know, it blurs the line between fact and fiction. So, um, so like today, you know, as individuals, as organizations, as we embark uh, work as we embark on this journey to navigate AI in this, in this AI-driven world, we're going to look at the potential benefits and the perils. We're also going to look at the, we're going to weigh the good and the bad side of this technology. So, um, and don't worry, we're not going to leave you in uncertainty. Our mission is clear, to equip you with the knowledge and controls to empower, that empowers you to take control of your digital identity. So, like, why do we need to protect our data in the context of AI? So as individuals, as we immerse ourselves into this AI-driven world, like our data has become very, very invaluable. Like, and this is not just like before where it was like PII, like um, personal identifiable information where you have your location in the database, your name, your age. But now we're having information about your behavioral analytics, like how you click every, like the people you call every day, that specific time of the day where you text somebody, like, I, I don't know if you use uh, your Apple phone and sometimes it says, okay, you can usually call this person at this time during this day. So like those, that information is just not, okay, I have this number, I have this information about myself. It's telling me how I behave over time. And you know, this, all these advancements, they drive the AI algorithm. Like they drive us. And like, it also, it also, like, it also brings about the topic, like converging AI with data security, it poses questions. Like questions it poses questions about like ethics, privacy, and security. Okay, so like also the duality of AI. You know, like in this dynamic landscape of AI tools, you know, while while there's also a potential for um, there's a potential for ben that benefits us. There's also a potential for data exposure. So. You know, what AI promises to revolutionize our lives, you know, through empowering us with um, productivity, you just like, you know, like um, Siri, like on your phone, like, hey, can, hey Siri, can you set a reminder for me by 7 p.m.? Like, you know, all these things that AI can do for you, ask ChatGPT, oh, can you make an itinerary for me? Like, I'm somebody that loves going to the gym a lot, like, can you make a meal plan for me? And like, it does all these things, like, the same information that does all of that, like the same AI technology that do does all of that, it also, exposes our most sensitive information to unprecedented risks. You know, these risks we are exposed to all the time because of, okay, like everybody just says, like, AI is very, very easy to use. Oh, I just use it to create whatever. But like, all this information we are giving it, like, we also have to think about the risks 
and like the privacy issues that we face with it. So like I'm going to talk about some like I'm going to talk about like AI tools across industries because I just want to give like since like AI has been there before like different companies Google Apple has been using it before but now it has been released to the consumers like tools like ChatGPT, Midjourney. I'm just going to discuss some of them, some cutting edge tools making transformative impacts in different organizations and different sectors of organizations. So yeah, in different industries, we have like the first industry I want to talk about is data processing and analysis. Like, you know, these tools can help businesses to like automate tasks, like increase productivity, analyze data. Like a perfect example of these tools is, um, examples is Tableau, Microsoft Power BI and Alterx. So like Tableau, what does it do? It takes raw data and turns it into dashboards like, and reports. And all this information that is getting like is raw data from different aspects of business organizations. So and, like what is the impact on data security? Like potential for data breaches as usual. Like all this information like that is being released. Like if it falls into the wrong hands, like they are not just getting information just about ourselves, but then like processed information, like things that have to do with our analysis. Also, like another industry that is receiving like cutting edge, um, taking advantage of this cutting edge tool is software development and testing. You know, like AI, AI can be used to like automate code generation, code testing, code, like different things can make it easier. You can easily use ChatGPT to create a Lambda code. Okay, please, can you help me create this specific script to do this specific thing? So like, some of the specific tools we use are ChatGPT, GitHub, Copilot, and Catalon. And the impact of the, the um, data security, I would say, is like, like imagine if the code was insecure. Like there's a risk of insecure code. Another industry is the customer support and engagement industry. Like most of us right now, when we go to sites, gone are the days when we had to like talk to somebody in the customer and the chat. Like the chatbot nowadays are more is easier to use, like you just need to, they are frequently asked questions that people always ask all the time. So like, why do you have to put a human being there when you can just easily put a bot that's gonna ask you some of, the, like that's gonna answer some of those your frequently asked questions. So there's an issue with also data privacy because the information you are giving it, like where is it being stored? And like, that's the essence of this uh, presentation. It's, okay, it's not just giving you the risk, it's not just about using this AI tools, it's about like, what is our information being used for? Like everything about privacy is like, okay, can I use like, why do we care about privacy so much? Like, can I use this and not really be afraid that somebody is going to use this data against me? Or you know, sometimes when you're like, oh, oh, you're just talking to somebody, I'm like, oh, I just I want to get new shoes today. And like you now see on your Google and YouTube, you start seeing ads about new shoes. I'm like, wait, are these guys listening to me? Like, what's happening here? Like, who are they, are they using? And nobody, anytime I ask that question, like nobody has ever given me a straight answer. Like what are the laws? What are the privacy laws? What, what, who, who's using our information? So like we also have voice assistants, like um, that industry too. Like a lot of people I know, they use Siri, um, Google Assistant. I use Siri a lot. Like whenever I want to set reminders, I just say, okay, I hope your, like, your phone is muted. But then like, hey Siri, can you set a reminder for me to go to class or have, I have a meeting on next week, Tuesday, 7 p.m. at this location. So. First, I have my location, I have the time, I have where I'm going, like I have different information in that prompt. So like that information, where is it being stored? Like everybody trusts Apple, but like really, if there's a breach, this specific information can be used to do, um, personalize attacks to you. So we also have, okay, we have cyber security and risk management, and we also have marketing and sales. You know, they are specific, and one of the popular tools out there is Mid Journey. Like, I'm sure some people have used it. I've used it a lot. Like, you know, gonna do this when you, like, when you're like, in my previous workplace, like, if you had to create a cyber security awareness training, like, you had to create an infographic um, PowerPoint. But then nowadays, like, Mid Journey, all you have to do is, okay, I want to create a cyber security awareness training. Can you create a specific picture? Maybe with like, you know, you want to create a phishing campaign or you want to create a phishing slide. All you have to do is just say, okay, create a hook with maybe a mail on it and you get the exact picture. So you don't have to search like before. It creates what you want. Like you can create what you want from. So it's a very powerful tool. But also issues of like, um, copyright infringements and all those things. Like Puja is going to talk about that in the second part. But then these are some of the issues. That, this, this is, like this is where AI is being used in industries and really making transformational differences. But then yeah, there are, like I also like to like, talk about some statistics to prove my points to prove the adoption of AI in different industries. And like um, first statistics, this is from Forbes. 
And it says the AI market is projected to reach a staggering 407 billion by 2027, experiencing substantial growth from its estimated 86.9 billion. You know, that's over a 300% increase. Like, it just shows that even, we, we thought we were ready for AI, but it's just showing the adoption, of, the adoption is really, really increasing in the consumer space. You can also see the chat GPT had one million users within the first five days of being available. Like you always wonder like what kind of app will have one million users? Like how useful is that app that it gets one million users in the first five days? Like productivity app that is being used by, I know most people here in this room, like you can't tell me you're not using chat GPT, but it's all right. And then it is expected that 10% of vehicles will be driverless by 2030. And you know like electric vehicles are the new thing now. Everybody wants to have an EV and like, Self-driving vehicles, who is going to be in charge? Artificial intelligence, like when you turn left, turn right, making those decisions, okay, maybe you have to choose between hitting a pedestrian or hitting a car. Like who, is, who makes those decisions? Those, so AI is going to be part of, it just shows like how, how many companies are taking it. Taking, um, and you see also voice search is on the rise with 50% of users using it daily. And like that's something very personal to me because I know that like while doing my research, I saw some stories of voice clone scams where people use your voice. And like one thing about having your voice is that like sometimes you, you think you are unique because oh, I only, only me has my voice. But imagine you recording my voice and putting my voice through software and then replicating that voice and then calling maybe my parents and telling them, oh, I'm in trouble. I need you to send money to me. Like these are examples that can be used with um, voice. Like, this, this information that we're easily giving, oh, to make our life so easy and can also be used to destroy us. And like, you know, and also in countries and like um, nation, nationalities, like who is leading the adoption? And it says China leads in adoption with 58% of companies deploying AI. And it just shows that, yeah, China is not slowing down. Like they know this is gonna really improve productivity, gonna improve profit, it's gonna improve, like even like people that want to go into like military warfare, like this is, this tool, is going to help with that. And also, like, it shows the most common ways users plan to use artificial intelligence. Like, you know, I was talking to somebody, and like, say, most people say they use it to craft emails, like, you know, plan travel itineraries. Somebody like me use it to plan my um, gym plans, like meal plans, and you know, like, but all this information is personal information. And like, you know, when you are putting it, you might do like, oh, can you create a sample information? But then, when it's not giving you the answer you want, you just say, oh, come on, I put all my personal information just to give me what I really want. And you know, this this just shows that okay, yes, there's adoption, but there's also a lot of people. A lot of people don't know what the risks of what they are doing with this tool and what what are the laws and regulations. So, yeah, those are some of the statistics, but then I want to just give a brief overview of some of the risks that we, may, we, we face with these two. And the first risk is the existential risks. And there's something called artificial inte general intelligence. I know while we are not close to artificial general intelligence, like there is the possibility of AI, like, overtaking human intelligence. And it also, it, it needs to be monitored. Like, you know, those days we watch all these sci-fi movies. Like, I always see most sci-fi movies, I see the reality right now. Like, it just begs the question, like, oh my God, like, will, will, this, be, will this be the end of the world? And like, um, another risk is biased algorithms. And like, you know, AI is always trained on data. Like, its main catalyst is data. And you know, there's a saying that like, if a lie is told long enough, like, everybody's gonna believe that lie. So like. What's to say that this data is not trained on wrong data? Like, what's the bias that, okay, this thing is this specific way? Like, I can just start putting so much. Like, during our research, like, there was this person, the grandfather of AI, I forgot, he used to work in Google. He says that, like, when you, want, when you wanted to train, when they were first training AI, maybe they wanted to train a model to say, okay, this is a fish. So in order for that model to understand it, like, they had to put so many pictures of fishes, like, so much data of fishes, so that by the time you, see, you just see even a tail or a fin, you already know that this is the fish. So like, imagine putting so much wrong data out there into this AI algorithm, like, and people now start asking, and sometimes I'm sure you've had this issue when you use this tool, and like, when you get, you ask it for, it gives you a wrong answer so confidently right, like you think it's, like this is so wrong, but it's so right at the same time because of the structure. So like that's something about biased algorithms. And we also have job displacement. Like everybody says, yeah, there'll be new jobs, but let's not forget about the people that don't know about AI. Because like, just like how all of us here have specialized knowledge, like there are still a lot of people that don't know about AI. And there's gonna be that advantage 
you have over them. So a lot of people actually, a lot of jobs that require repetition will be lost. And the new jobs that will be created are not just going to, they're going to be people of people who require, who know how to use these tools. And data privacy, personal data exploitation, like, you know, one thing I always talk about is like, our data, like, like, I hate the fact that whenever I say something or I say I'm looking for something, I start seeing, I know sometimes I start seeing ads about those things, but then what is my data being, okay, is it because like, is my microphone being used without me being, like, I don't mind people giving me an easier way to get a specific thing, but I want to know that, okay, I gave out that data, like it was my, under my own permission. So like there are data privacy issues and you know intellectual property as we spoke about, like mid journey, like people, you know there was a time when DALI came out, a specific AI tool and everybody was just creating like different specific artworks, like Mona Lisa's of themselves, but like the, where, where was this AI taking his data from? Where was his source from? So like, this, where, are there any laws protecting against artists, against um, people that create such, such, um, um, such arts and Puja will talk more on that, and we also have misinformation influence campaigns where people can just use AI because of his ability to scale, to create havoc on social media, like creating, because of the amount of data it has, it can just create so much inform misinformation out there. And we also have AI scams, like I spoke about, like voice cloning, like, you know, deep fakes, identity fraud, like, just, I still feel like this is still the, one of the biggest scams out there because, like, there's a thin line between fact and fiction. Like, you can't really know, if you see a video of me out there saying, Derogatory, derogatory words or bad things. Like, first thing you're going to do is believe before. Like, you're, you're, you're going to nobody's going to verify if it's me because it looks exactly like me. So that's a very big, big risk and concern. And you know, we have potential to potential to impact at the personal level. Like, you know, we don't know the future, but I feel like they're, they're going to be like you can call me crazy, but I think they're going to be robots in the future. And like, these robots are going to be based on AI. And like, a lot of people are going to have relationships with this. Like, they can have relationships as like maybe, like, a, like you know, maybe like Jarvis in um, Iron Man. Like, and over time, like, when you have AI telling you, like, listening to you every time and like telling you the right things all the time, and like, you're always having conversations, it's going to affect our conversations with other people because like, we are always used to getting yes, hearing everything right all the time. But then when we now meet other human beings who are dynamic, who can say no to, like we are just like, it's gonna affect our personal relationships. That's what I feel. And then like, like we have offensive cyber attacks, like more targeted cyber attacks. There's a social economic gap, like people that don't know about AI, like and people that know about AI, there's a big gap. And you see that big gap, like it's like, it's like, yeah, it's unfair, but it's true. Like, it's just like, like you having a special skill, specialized skill gives you that gap against somebody that doesn't have it, that's just used to it. And it's gonna, the gap is already there, but it's gonna increase. And we also have national security. Like, you know, for countries, countries like nation states, planning specialized or targeted cyber attacks to, people, to countries. Like, countries need to protect themselves. They need to create laws. Like, this is not just a company thing, it's not just an organization thing, like it's a world thing. And that's where Puja is gonna explain more from our own point of view based on the laws, the ethics, and how government and organizations can align themselves to create a peaceful world. So yeah, I'm gonna give it to Puja now. Thanks, Atilade. Yeah, he has already set up the stage for me. <laughs> so I I think many here would agree that artificial intelligence is a revolutionary technology. So with a quick show of hands, can you tell me who of you are excited about the about our future with AI? <laughs> and who's concerned about it? <laughs> Very understandable. We have an interesting mix. And it's okay to have any kind of approach that you choose because right now we don't know where we are heading, right? So if you ask me, well, looking at all the different possibilities and potentials of AI, I am really excited to see the future. But let's be honest, it's not just AI. There's quantum computing, cryptocurrencies, metaverse, machine learning, and so many more technologies which are advancing quickly too. All of them together can do wonders or can shatter us completely. And it's very difficult for anyone to predict at this point about the outcomes, positive or negative, and also how far are we from this complete transformation. 
Sorry about it. Thank you. So anyways, we will just start with the first point now. So, um, but one thing is clear, we need to manage the risks so that we can create a safe future where we can trust and maximize the benefits of this technology. Elon Musk has repeatedly stated that AI has the potential to destroy entire civilization. It is a pretty huge claim. And when the risk is too high, it needs to be managed at all possible levels. It is crucial that we all pull together to manage the risk. And this V are these four broad categories. First is government. It is the first time in history where tech leaders are actively approaching the government, calling for an action, asking to regulate them. This is a unique situation and effective regulations can surely curb misuses of AI, especially by the malicious actors. Next is AI companies. Who better understand the nuances and, in, and intricacies of AI than those who built it? So they have a significant responsibility in driving and guiding the controls of AI. And last, it's us. So we are at the uh, receiving end of the impact, but at the same time, we also have the power to influence its trajectory. Especially us working in cybersecurity and related tech stacks, so these are the next two uh, stakeholders, businesses and the individuals. Businesses, they have more responsibility. Many of you might be using AI for your work. So you have an added responsibility when you are using AI. So in the next few slides, we, we will explore more specific about each of the player, with more specific controls about each of the player. And these controls are drawn from expert insights, research, and recommendations from leaders. So let's dive into the first one. Yes. So government. Government must deeply understand AI and its implications to design the regulations. They can accelerate this process by collaborating with different tech leaders, scientists, researchers, and maybe people from some other sectors like ethics. They can give their insights and they can make this process faster. Some of the uh, countries, including US, have already embarked on this journey. As we all know, most governments are still struggling with post-COVID recovery economic challenges, so keeping a steady focus can be challenging, which brings us to our first control, strategic planning. Governments should at least uh, plan at the earliest about their roadmap, the budget, and if necessary, maybe a whole separate agency to exclusively focus on AI. Government should also consider having visibility over AI's progressive capabilities and should impose advanced controls over the AI models that possesses high risk or maybe the ones that cater to a vast user base. That's, there's another domain that we want to discuss is legal framework and accountability. So first we have data privacy, that's a burning topic. So we took years to understand the complexities of data privacy in the, in the era of social media. And it is high time now that governments step in and they create some robust framework where e uh, data security is part of an ecosystem and not an afterthought. Recently, many artists and creators have expressed their concerns about AI's involvement in co copyright issues, including the creators for the famous show Game of Thrones. In cases like this, the creators must have an autonomy to decide if their work is used to train the AI systems. Now, if anyone is thinking how practical this is, there's an entire debate on that. What about transparency and public trust? So just think about it like a nutritional label, but for AI. 
Imagine a scenario where AI tools come with a scorecard where they show their data diversity, transparency, user engagement. It can give you some insights about the platform and then you can take an informed decision. Last is user education and risk management. So we will talk more about it later. But right now, just make a note that some of these controls might overlap with multiple players. Now, uh, I think we will not have enough time to go through the regulations in detail, but the gist of it, the gist of it is we need kind of a global collaboration. There are so many initiatives and discussions happening all over the world, but to tackle this technology, huge technological challenge, we need effective global collaboration, and this will prevent redundant efforts. It will, it will reduce time for us to get to the results, and it will promote better understanding to tackle the cross-border threats. Okay. So now let's talk about the AI companies. They are the two true drivers of this AI vehicle. They can direct us in the right or wrong direction. For AI companies, ethics play a key role, especially where the boundaries are still being drawn. It's all about the proactive steps that the AI companies can take, especially towards security and ethics. So this brings us to our first point, ethics and inclusion. AI companies have to maintain a very high ethical standards and promote a broad vision of inclusion. It is important to ensure the inclusion of diverse cultures, races, and minorities to develop an unbiased and equitable AI. Also, AI companies should ensure that they give due recognition to content creators. And there should be strict controls to prevent children from using AI unsupervised. Even now, we have seen some examples where, you know, children, AI had generated results which could have been harmful to children. Next is openness and honesty. AI companies, if they start tagging their metadata for synthetic content, it can help reduce the misinformation. Google has already adhered to this practice. And at a fundamental level, users should have the right to know if they are interacting with AI. Meta got into, recent, uh, got into trouble very re recently with their open source AI model, Llama 2. It responded to prompts with instructions to develop a biological weapon. And now there is a debate to weigh pros and cons of open source versus closed source model. Noticeable data controls. I think this is important. All of us use social media and many other AI platforms, but most of us forget to set our preferences for data security. So that's where AI companies can step in and maybe they can make it more noticeable for us so that we, you know, when we are using these platforms very actively. We can decide whether or not we want to share our data with them. We can, we can take the control of our data. We can delete it whenever we want. Last is continuous vigilance. So of course, this is important. And for AI companies, especially having a defense in depth, having controls at all levels, maybe a lot of bug bounties, pen testings, internal controls, uh, external researchers taking uh, their uh, um, expertise and telling them, these all things are very important. So last we move to us. Okay, so the consumers, I think, Many of us imagine a future, like Atilade said, like sci-fi movies, and it can be a bit risky. AI is integrating into our society way too rapidly. Our risk landscape is shifting drastically too, as it spreads to more, it's, as it spreads more within the smaller communities and among the less tech-savvy people. 
The fact is that AI has been here for decades. All the big sectors have been reaping the fruits of AI's potential. It's just now that individuals are harnessing the power of generative AI to enhance our productivity, cut cost, and more. But generative AI is not flawless. We must pursue skills like fact-checking, data validation, creativity, critical thinking, and a required understanding of the subject if we want to create high-quality results. So uh, we have five minutes before uh, uh, we end our presentation, so I will just quickly go through all these points. Um, first is education. So like I explained, that you know we cannot use AI we cannot rely completely on the AI. There are two important things to notice here. One is skill augmentation is required. We are stepping into a world where we have to improve our skills, we have to upgrade, we have to change our skills. So this is one area where government can also step in, spread the awareness about this as well as the risks of AI. The second thing is AI should never be used as a front runner. It should always be a co-pilot. Also, one more thing that I wanted to uh, cover is it is very important to know what kind of AI you are interacting with. So each AI company can have a different agenda. It, and they can be profit-based. They can be sharing your data with third parties or they can be using your data for advertisements and marketing. So make sure that you know your AI very well when you are uh, interacting with it or when you are sharing your important data with it. Next is vigilance. So as we move more and more towards AI, it is understandable that offensive uh, threats will increase. And with that, our identity and data are very uh, are at a high risk. So it is important to have regular cyber check-ins. Also, when you are sharing your data with AI, like Atilade said, you are sh you are putting it out there. So be very mindful of what kind of sensitive information you are putting there. Okay, so. Last is community empowerment. So like I said, that the cybersecurity market will change soon. While we may encounter an increased cyber attacks, there will also be a demand for more defensive roles. Only community awareness can make the situation somehow manageable. And we can play an important part in raising awareness. So we can make sure that we are uh, you know, uh, promoting an informed AI usage, and we uh, we can foster a safer community. So, lastly, to conclude this talk, AI's expansion is inevitable, and its implications are endless. It's quite reasonable to say that AI will profoundly influence our future. At this stage, collaboration at various levels can be a game changer. Drawing from our own experiences, we could not gauge the depth of the topics that we covered today when we started the research for this. Anyways, we hope that this session provided you some insights into this world. So I think we are ready for your questions. We have two minutes. We are all good? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you yes. <laughs> That's a very good question. So I recently heard that it is happening in the gaming industry. So gaming industry uh, has started uh, using this uh, control that the children has to take a picture with the parent and only then they can use it. So, you know, this is, I don't think any of the AI platform has started this yet, but this can be implemented in this way. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you everyone. Thank you. <laughs>